Hey guys, and welcome to another MDO Compositions tutorial. This is number 27, 28 actually, in the first Steps in Preparation series. And today we're going to take a look at Converger Nodes, okay? So let's just set up a simple scene. Let's just select this cube, delete it. Let's add, start display. Let's add a monkey, smooth, um, subdivision surface level two, RX like this, zero camera closer like this let's give it some color namely a slightly reddish color like this let's also add environment lighting <clears throat> at 0.3 and let's change this to a sun lamp with a value of 0 0.3 uh, 0 0.8 actually that's better that's a, and a slightly yellowish touch something like this okay f12 and that looks perfect. Now, one last thing. We want to make sure that the background is black. So let's just uncheck sky over here. So it doesn't render the sky. This gray, ugly gray. F12 and we get this. And that's perfect. Now, compositor, use nodes, backdrop. Control, shift, left click to get the viewer node. Like this. And now let's take a look at the nodes. We've got a couple conversion nodes here. And... Um, Let's just go over them one by one. Um, conversion nodes are basically there to convert something. For example, here you can split the image into different channels and recombine them, or you can use certain um, uh, functions. Like with ID mask, you can mask something, you can set the alpha, RGB to black and white, and so on and so forth. Now, the first one is color ramp, and you might know that from textures. This simply turns the image into a black and white image, and now you can put sliders or markers in here to color or to um, yeah, influence your image. But now you can see what's black is black and what's white is white. If we bring the black one in closer, you can see more black appears. And then you can also see correspondingly more black in your scene. Shut up. Yes. Cool. Now, if you bring in the white slider a bit more, you can see everything becomes a bit brighter. Okay. In general, you will notice that the black slider is very aggressive, okay? If you move that just a little bit, you can see it really becomes much, much darker. On the other hand, the white slider is... Well, it doesn't really do a lot, okay? It becomes a bit brighter, but nowhere near that to the extent that the black slider does, okay? So that's one thing to note. You can also use that to color your image, okay? For example, you can now select that and make that red. Now you can see you can actually get close to our original image again. Not quite, I guess. That's yeah, quite similar. Make it a bit brighter even, maybe. Let me see. Nah, not quite. But you can see what, what, what it does, okay? Now you have our final image. You can also color this in a more, more, more extreme way. For example, you can say you want, now we want over here, you want a green color. And then you want, once again, a beige color. And you get this kind of effect. And I, I don't know if you can really see that. Let's bring that in. Bring that in as well. Now you can see what the green does. It just affects the highlights. And then the, the really bright part of the highlights is once again this beige color because um, that's on the right. You can also with flip just flip the whole thing. Which was a bad idea. I just have to make sure that there is a black slider in the end. Come on. Okay. Now if you flip that you can see... It flips the whole thing, but because we have black on the right and black on the left, it, it keeps the background as it is, okay? What you can also do, and this is funny as well, you can also create an alpha here, so to say, okay? You can, for example, say, okay, this black over here is completely transparent. And because, by the way, right now, if you look at this, you can see the alpha is completely white. Now, if we select this slider, and if we go to alpha zero, you can see this is what happens. And this is our new alpha channel so to say okay and what you could do now for example is the following you could use um, a alpha over like this then you could just plug, plug that in there and then you'd get something like this okay and you can see it automatically takes this alpha channel with the alpha over node in this case and then the image and adds the image onto the alpha according to this and you can see what it does and I can very um, Italy adjust the alpha, okay, 
or you can make the alpha stronger. Wrong one, I'm sorry, this one. Until everything becomes opaque. Or what you can also do, you can move that to over there. Add another one to over here. Make that one completely transparent. And that one not. Let's make that one completely opaque and you can see what happens. And now we've got this. And here you can really play with those things and um, see what happens. It's, 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 it's a bit weird to play with, but you can use that to um, overlay certain things. Maybe not an object, but maybe if you have like, a, I don't know, some magical effects or some, well, I don't know, uh, flames or so, you can overlay them with such a color ramp, for example, to get uh, nice gradients and so on. Uh, okay, so this is basically the color ramp. I think most of you guys already know this node. It's quite commonly used. Um, I can I showed you one other technique in the last tutorial on how to create masks with this a blur node and a dilated road node and some other things to yeah to use the blur node to blur the image and the color ramp to um, sharpen the borders again. So then you really have fine tuning control over uh, the borders and the feather effect. Okay. Cool. So this is our color ramp. Let's just delete that. It's ugly. And let's add in a new one like this. Okay. Next thing is RGB to black and white. This is rather simple. You have your image, you plug that in, it becomes black and white. As you might notice, if you plug that in there, for example, we get the exact same image. Okay. But I think this one is easier to calculate for your computer than this one, of course. So this makes sense if you don't want to do anything else. Not much to say about the RGB to black and white, but keep it in mind, it's, it's quite useful. Next thing would be set alpha. And this is a node that, in my opinion, doesn't really have so much use. Okay. What this does, you can we, we can set an alpha, a new alpha for an image. Okay? Let's say you have this, this image right now. And now you can, for example, you can see over here if you go to alpha view, where you can actually see the alpha, what it looks like. Now you can use that, and then there's no alpha left. Now you can use any other kind of alpha that you want. For example, you can just create whatever you want. Really, could for example um, use a filter. We know the filter nodes by now. A blur node. You can use that alpha over there. You could just blur that with fast Ga Ga Gaussian by ten percent or something. And then you stand as the new alpha. And that's what it would look like, okay? Now this is the new alpha of this image. But um, the reason it doesn't make much sense th this way is because now we cannot use that alpha over here. So we'd have to use the alpha over here to do something, to do an operation later on. And then this becomes unnecessary, okay? So the node cannot be used. It can be used this way, but it doesn't, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. You can use it, for example, if you want to change the alpha pass of your final image because it, before it goes into the composite but other than that you usually don't use it what you can do with this for example is you can um color mix that plug that in there and plug that in there and now you can see let's also go to back to the normal view everything is black okay but here you can change the alpha if we put it down you can see Oh, yeah, you have to, of course, make sure that the alpha is considered. So let's delete the multiply. Let's once again go to alpha over. Here we go. Now it works. Viewer, that to there, and that to there. And now the lower that is, the less you get, the more that is, the more you get. Okay. And now you could, for example, add in um, another node, which is called the, let me just see, the time node. Okay. And you can put that in there. Uh, so you can see on frame one, it has a value of zero. On frame 250, which is over here, it's got a value of one. Okay. Now, if you make that like this a little bit, then you can see it doesn't change a lot in the beginning, but then suddenly it becomes darker and darker. And then it really gets this nice fading effect where it fades to black. And this way you can just fade out a scene if you have an animation or something. On the other hand, you could also not do that and just use a simple mix node okay then you could pl pluck that in there i think that should work and put that to black and now ex it would work the exact same way so i do not really know a lot of uses for the alpha over uh, for the alpha um, for the set alpha node that's what it called i guess set alpha node 
If you have, you can always leave it in the comments. I didn't really find a technique where you use it, where you need it, but uh, it, it, you, it, it can also be used and maybe in sometimes it's a bit more nicer to look at in the compositor. It gives you, may give you a nicer structure, but usually I don't use it at all. Okay, we don't need that yet right now and neither do we use that. Okay, next thing is a ID mask. Now we've used that a couple times by now and that's because it is very, very important to mask certain parts of your monkey in this case, okay? So let's do one thing first. If you want to use um, an ID mask, you first of all need an input, okay? And that input comes from your render layer. There are there have to be two additional sockets over here. And you can create those sockets as always in the uh, render properties under layers. You can simply check object index and material index. Now you can see we have object index and material index. But right now, if we render this, you can see nothing happens. black and black. So that's not quite the solution. What we have to do now, um, we have to assign those indices to an object or to a material. So to make that interesting, we first of all have to duplicate this mug so we have several objects in our scene, like this. Like this. Okay. Now let's say we want the object index of this monkey. What that is, that is a mask that just gives us um, the alpha channel, so say, of this monkey, okay, you, you, you select it, you go to the objects, uh, object data, or just object, I guess it's called, then we go to um, relations, and then we go to pass index, and we set that to, let's say, one, okay, and then for the material, let's say those two monkeys have one thing in common, and that is that their eyes, they are actually red, okay, like this. Let's just make them red. New material. Or oh, no, let's make them green or something. Green looks fancy. Assign. This one got green eyes. Now you can just shift select the other one. Control L. Object data. Okay, that was the wrong way around. Control set. Select this monkey. Shift select this one. Control L. Object data. Now they both have green eyes. So the material of their eye is the same. Okay. Now let's go to this material, to the green one. Let's go to um, options, pass index of two, okay? Now you can also use a pass index of one over here because it wouldn't interfere with the object index. And that is because it's not the same thing, of course. But to me, it is uh, easier to work with different numbers so I can actually um, assign in my brain one number to one thing, okay? Now if we re-render this, it looks like this. Not a very appealing scene, but that's not really important right now. And now here we can already see what happens. Um, right now we've got an index object over here and a material index over here, okay? But if we already have that, you might ask, what do we use this ID mask for? Because if we plug that in right now, you can see that's what happens, which is a bit weird. Then on one, you get nothing. On two, you get this. And the way this actually works is that um, on zero, you can see everything that is not used as a mask. On one, you can see all the material masks with one, which we don't have, and on two, all the ones on two. But you can see this is the exact same thing as this. And that is true because we only have one material index. Let's say this monkey, or these monkeys, have a nose that looks like this. It is... blue blue now unfortunately also selected that other part let's just do that reassign that to the rest and now it looks like this cool now if we select this one we also go to material index pass 3 f12 then you can see not very appealing either but now we have if we just look at the index mater material index then you can just see all of them, and with the ID mask, you can actually select between them. Zero is everything but the masks, one is nothing, two is this one, and three is this one. And same goes, of course, for the object index. You should always use an ID mask, even if you just use one object index, because otherwise you might be confused once you add another one. Okay, and here we go to one. Cool. And now we can use those masks to do something. For example, you can say... Um, 
Um, okay. Uh, I, I think those blue noses look awesome, but I'd still like to see how they look if they were red, okay? What you could, for example, do, you could simply use that as the top input and also as the lower input. Then you could use, let me see, that as the factor. And now it actually takes... That didn't work. Oh, I'm sorry. This one needs to be over there. And now it takes everything from the um, top input and only the blue nose from the lower input. And now you can only work on the lower input. For example, you can now say, you can use a hue saturation value, put that in there, and now you can just change the hue, and you can see the nose changed its color. You can also see this border there, which is, doesn't look too nice. Okay, just, you can see the screen border because not. You can go to smooth mask, and now you can see the mask becomes smooth. Uh, this one. But it doesn't really solve the problem, does it? Now, um, as we know from the last tutorials, we can use a couple techniques to change that. We could, for example, use a filter, dilate the road. Put that to one, and you can see all the way around. The smaller it gets, the, the more blue. The bigger it gets, the more orange, theoretically. Although there is suddenly green. And that is because... The reason why this becomes green is because... Um, this channel looks like this. We change the hue of the whole of the whole image, and that's why we get this. And you can see with the dilate row, we have very little control. Um, either it becomes green, more or less okay, or then blue. Okay, not not much in between. So now we could, for example, once again use a, a vector, uh, a filter, a blur, like this. Use that as the top input. Then we could just blur that by a couple pixels. Then look like this. Now we could add in what we just uh, learned about before, the color ramp in there. And I could just bring that together a little bit. Now we really have a lot more control over what is being considered and what is not. Now you can see you have more fine tuning control. X, control X. Okay, so this is the, um, where is it, ID mask for you. Next thing is math. And this is a quite a complex node because you can see you have all kind of functions here. And we won't talk about all of them, we'll only talk about a few. But um, let's go over the most important ones. Add. First of all, this only adds black and white values to each other. You can see as soon as you put it in, you have a black and white output. Um, and right now, what does it do? We have it in the add mode, which means it adds things together. Right now, it takes this input as a black and white image, and it just adds zero on top of it, which means nothing happens. The higher that is, the more it adds onto it. Okay. What you can also do, you could use this as, use this as the top and the lower input, and then it adds this image onto itself, and therefore makes it brighter. Okay. You can always consider that with M. Oh, here we go. Yeah, um, yeah. It just adds it so it becomes brighter. You can also go to multiply. Then the whole thing becomes darker, because if you multiply something with something else, and since there's no value below uh, above one over here, if you multiply any value on here with anything else below one, it always becomes darker than before. You could also divide it to make it much, 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 much brighter. Uh, you could go to power, which does something else. I'm not even really sure what it does. You can see the higher that is. It's probably, I'm not quite sure, it's probably this the image inputs value, for example. It's got a value of, let's say, 0.8 over here. And then with this function, it makes 0.8 um, to the... 1.68 power, which is a bit weird, but to, to the second power, for example. And because, once again, this is, all the values are below zero, if you use the power function, it becomes even lower than what it was before. But then you also have those two, and they are quite interesting, greater than and less than. If you go to less than, then everything less than two gives you white output. 
Now, since, since everything on this image is less than 2, it gives you a completely wide output. Now, if you go to 0.5, then you can see um, all, the, all the areas except for the highlights have a value below 0.5 and therefore appear white. And only where the highlights are, we've got a value above 0.5, okay? But it's, it's an, ugly, uh, an ugly output, it's just black and white, but it gives you those areas, okay? But you could also say greater than, you only want the um, areas that are greater than 0.5, and then you can see it's the exact opposite. And now you could, for example, use that color mix as a factor. To put that in above and that over here to mix those two together and you can see here we've got those ugly highlights and if we now put that in then you can just see you're just using this one as a mask okay and now we could for example say okay we want to we want to blow out our highlights we want to make them brighter so we just go to color rgb curves put in the lower input make everything much brighter there like this but now, our pro or you can also say we want to color it. Okay, I'll just make it only a bit brighter, and then make it a bit more, a bit less red. Make it a bit more blue, and a bit more green maybe or something. But now I can see this mask is way too sharp. So once again, let's just add in a blur node, blur it a couple pixels, and then you can, for example, say, okay, I, this is okay, but I also want to once again add in a color ramp, and then you can just bring it together a little bit to make it a bit sharper, and you can see how you can. Do those things and now if you compare it to the original it is quite a different output with, with only a few notes okay it doesn't really look good but i can I, i'm sure you can see what it does okay so the next thing let's just delete that that as well actually i, I needed that converter math um yeah, commonly used are add, subtract, multiply, divide sometimes to un, un -pre multiply um, alpha values. Then uh, the whole trigonometrical functions or whatever they are called in English won't really be used much. Logarithm, neither, power, I never used that before as well. And then less than and greater than, they are also quite important. And in some cases, minimum and maximum, but I won't talk about those today because, yeah, I barely ever use them. Um, I, I do know, however, that there's a technique on how to manually um, create a C pass with minimum and maximum, but um, we don't need that either. Cool. The next thing is separate RGBA, HSVA, YUVA, and YCBCRA. Okay. Let's just bring all of them into our scene. Okay. RGBA. HSVA, YUVA, and YCVCR. Okay, here we go. What does this do? Um, it basically separates your image into separate channels, okay? And that is important for a couple of things. Um, let's take a look at the first thing. You can see this is the input and this is the output. You can see red, green, blue. So on this channel, you only have the red values as a black and, black and white format, okay? Now, since this is nearly completely blue and this is nearly completely green, there is not a lot of red in there or nearly nothing and therefore it's quite dark. Let's go to green. You can see the eyes are very bright, but everything else is quite um, dark because everything else doesn't have a lot of green in it and finally blue a bright nose and everything else is pretty um, dark and the alpha channel is just the alpha channel now what can we use that for let's say um, let's say the following let's say hmm, this is a bit difficult Let's try some. Let's go to over here and let's just change the brightness to 5, which is really a lot, okay? You can see you get this image. And now I'm pretty sure if we go back here, if we now use the, the, a math node, put it in there, go to greater than 1, you can see there are a lot of areas in this image that are brighter than 1. 
And whenever you have values brighter than one, you get a problem because now, let me just show you that. Um, let's say you now anticipate that you want to darken this image by itself for whatever reason that would be. Let's say you use color mix, multiply, and you multiply it with itself, okay? And you can suddenly see, whoa, those areas, they became even brighter. At least I think they did. Let me just see. Okay, those areas became even brighter. And that's because they are above one. If you multiply something above one with something else above one, it becomes brighter, of course, which is not what we want. Okay, so let's say you want to multiply that by itself, but you want to make sure that everything becomes darker or stays the same. So you'd have to clip uh, the high values in here. Okay. Now, the way you usually clip high values, or at least the way I usually do it, is with a vector, map value, use minimum, use maximum, and now everything above 1 and below 0 is cut off. But you can see, that's not what we want. And the reason is that it just converted into a black and white image. So you cannot use any of those operators that create a black and white image, black and white image on the colored image, unless you split it into its separate channels. So right now, let's do the following. Let's add in converger, combine RGBA, put over here. That's what we get. And now we use red on red, green on green, blue on blue, and alpha on alpha. Oh, come on, come on. Now you can see we've got the exact same images over here. And now let's just use that, shift D, in there, in there. And in there. Now this this apparently this gives you no difference, but now if we do the same thing as before, if we delete that, if we once again go to we could also use a math node by the way, gives us the same thing, is maybe even a bit faster. Uh, math multiply. No, we cannot use that. Sorry, that gives us a black and white output. Didn't think of that. Okay, multiply, top input, and lower input. You can see we get this. And now if we do the same thing over here. Hmm. Um, I just tried to make a point and it completely failed. So give me just some time to find out why. Okay, for some reason it didn't work previously because if you multiply the image by itself, apparently it doesn't work. However, this this in this case I made it work. You have this image with values brighter than one because of the bright sun lamp. Now if you multiply this color, this reddish color, or any color you want, by this image, then you get this output, okay? Which is quite different. And you can see we have we still have those very bright areas, although we multiplied a red color over it. It's still this bright. Now over here, we don't have any values above one. They are all exactly one because um, they were cut off above that. And you can see here, those highlights became actually red because um, you multiply one with something above below one, and therefore it becomes something below one, uh, becomes something reddish. And here we can see the difference. And in some cases, this is really important. Um, this is even more important if the original image gives you values below 1, because if it gives you values below 1, and then if you add it together, then you're adding something negative to something else, and then becomes lower instead of a bit brighter, and that just gives you unexpected results. So if you have those kind of issues, make sure you separate them in different channels, limit all the channels, and recombine them, and then you get um, an output that actually doesn't have any values in it above 1 or below 0, and then you can work with that as you are used to. Very important, very important. Now, uh, but there are <coughs> other um, ways to separate it. This was red, green, blue. This is hue saturation value. And we talked about that before in the tutorial. Basically, hue saturation value is this, okay? So over here you can see you, you choose colors with red, green, and blue. And over here, you choose this by the hue, which you can see the dot goes around in a circle. The saturation, is it yellow or nearly, is there no, no color in it? And the value. How bright is it? Okay. 
And then this is the exact same thing, shift A, converter, combine HSVA. And you can see alpha, same output as over here. This is the hue, okay, completely white. Okay, the brighter something is, the more it is in the blue pink area and the lower the value is the more in the green yellow area okay so this this nose is quite bright and that's because it is in the blue area i guess so it's right around there at around 0.67 or something um the eyes are not that bright because they are in the area of about let me see 0.3 or something the whole monkey is pretty dark because it's in the area of about point zero, <laughs> pretty much zero because it's red. And you can see this is not the illuminance, not the brightness, but just the color values, okay? And yeah, and you can see suddenly it, it, it goes from dark to completely bright. And that is because you can see here we've got a reddish color, and over here it's a pinkish color. And you can see in the color wheel, red is here at zero and pink is all the way to point nine. Okay, cool. Um, and then you can once again use the exact same thing. For example, you can only change the hue. You could use a, uh, a color uh, RGB curve only on the hue. And change something over there. You can see it automatically gives you weird changes. It doesn't change anything on the brightness or so, just on the color. Okay. Yeah. Or I could just uh, change the saturation. Um, let's try that. Just change the saturation there. Make it more saturated. Or actually, there's one one of them. Less saturated, nearly. Okay. And you can once again see um, the eyes and the nose nearly stays the same because they are either 100% saturated or 0% saturated. In this case, it's 100% saturated. And therefore, we have to bring that down to desaturate them. You can see then it works as well. Or the value. And this we can actually make it brighter. Like this. This is normal. You can make it brighter than before, or darker, or whatever you want, really. Okay. Not just delete all of them. Let me just see. Control C. Just did one. Control X. Okay. And now this is a bit more tricky than the others, um, and that's because we usually don't work with Y, U, V, and A. Uh, this comes from the early ages, or from yeah, a, a few decades back, when uh, black and white TV changed to color uh, to color TV. Okay, and this Y is only the black and white pause. Okay, and that was so that they um, that all the TVs, or, or just so that this format was actually backwards compatible, so that you could use this signal on a black and white TV as well as on a colored TV. Okay, so if you had a black and white TV, you only use this one. And if you had a um, color TV, it also used the U and the V. Then you can see you've got your, uh, your original image back, okay? And of course the alpha again, although I don't think TVs use the alpha value. Um, yeah, so here you can also very easily um, change only, come on. Only the brightness, okay. And it's got quite a similar function as value if you make it brighter, but if you make it darker, you can see it becomes more saturated and quite quite cool, quite quite weird, uh, but, but yeah, quite funny as well. If you just um, use that, why do I always delete the curve? On the U, then you can see it's completely unpredictable. Um, it becomes 
yeah, just the nose becomes different, for example, in this case. It's only greenish. It's, it's like you have no kind of idea what it really does, okay? Uh, I guess it does something, but... Okay. Same goes for that one. If you just change the, the, the V pass, you can see it becomes yellowish in this case, or more like reddish, and it's just not very um, predictable. And the same thing goes for YCVCRA. And yeah, it's just um, a different method than YUVA. Um, yeah, you can see that's how it's different. Just a different method of recombining it. Uh, and then you can also change a uh, codec or whatever you want to call that. So I don't really know enough about this to really explain it so well. But you can see what it does and you just play with it. Then you will know what you can use for what and um, yeah, what it's good for. Okay, so we actually covered all of those as well. And now finally we all only have the alpha convert. And let me just cut all that. Let's move that to over there. Now, the alpha convert, what does that do? Um, it converts your alpha, basically, okay? Um, let's take a, a look at this image. Okay, now, um, if you put that in here onto uh, an image, then you can see you get this ugly jacked egg. And you might think, why would I want this ugly jacked egg? But there is a reason for that. And the thing is, this is a pre-multiplied image, okay? And that basically means as much as it is anti-aliased, in a way. And this is our alpha, okay? And you can see if we zoom in here, they pretty much... Um, lay on each other. You can see um, we get this gradient from opaque to not opaque, this uh, anti-aliased um, gradient effect. And there you can see on the alpha, it's more or less the exact same, okay? Problem now is if you... Um, for example, use a color mix node. And now if you add that image uh, onto the white part with mix, and you use the alpha as a factor, you can see you get these issues. Uh, these issues. Now here you cannot see them too well because we already disabled sky and because now it's now black, but you can see this gray outline, okay? And the reason for that is that this image is basically already pre-multiplied, so it has this gradient effect. And now, once it gets added onto this or mixed with that, according to another image which has a gradient, then you basically get kind of like a double gradient, okay? And then it, it kind of looks weird and no longer as it's supposed to be. Now, if we, however, use this and drop it in there, you can see that problem gets solved a bit. Uh, let me just mute that. It's a rather subtle effect, but a, a little bit, of, a bit of the gray. Um, you can see it over here. This, there is gray, and now there is no gray, and that is because um, over here you can see we get this, and with the primal to key transformation, you can see there are more red pixels now because. Um, they are no longer anti-aliased, and therefore this like, gradient is gone. And this way, you get much you can much get much cleaner composites. If you want to know more about how to use this, please watch one of my two other tutorials on these in the side dish category, because there I made a side dish um, especially on how to combine images according to their alphas, because it's more difficult than you might think, at least as long as you don't want to use full sample anti-aliasing, which just takes too much time in some cases. So, um, yeah, that is basically it. Now we can try one other thing. We could now go to, go to key to pre-mill. You can see here we actually created a pre-multiplied image, uh, an unpre-multiplied, and here you can see we once again pre-multiplied it. So if you, if for, in a, for any reason you should get this image, this one, um, then you can just use that to unpre-multiply that. Okay, it doesn't work on just any image. Okay, you need an image that actually has an alpha channel. Otherwise, this won't really do a lot. Okay. So yeah, 
this once again became a rather long tutorial. Uh, it basically covers pretty much all those nodes. Let me just see if we forgot something. We had color ramp, RGB to black and white, quite simple. Set alpha, ID mask, math, all this, the color separation uh, units here. RGBA, HSVA, YUVA, and YCBCRA. And the alpha convert. Um, yeah, oh, one thing I could show you, I also showed it in the other tutorial that I talked about in the side dish category, is how to, I mean, right now we were able to, let's just delete that, we don't need that. I showed you how to, you can use that on here. pre to key, you get this jacked output. But let's say for some reason you, you would like to get the alpha to be jacked. No big deal, just put it into the alpha channel. But you can see it doesn't really work. I do not know why that is. I'm sure there's a reason for that. Mainly it is because you cannot do that on the alpha channel itself. But there's of course a way, because you must imagine how does that really work, okay? Uh, it basically works by, if you have this image, if you want to pre-multiply it, you could basically go like this, color mix alpha like this, and then multiply. And you can see you get this anti-aliased result, because um, see, this is exactly the same thing. And that is because we have this output, which is completely opaque, and now we multiply it with with this one, which is white everywhere except for around the corners where it becomes darker. And therefore the darker this is, the less color we have here on the border, and therefore it gets this anti-aliased result. Now if we do this backwards, let's say we have this, and now of course if we divide um, the image by the alpha channel, which is um, the opposite of this one, then you can see we get this. And that's the exact same thing as this. So what you could also do, we could just cut that out for now. You can see um, an, an alternative to using the alpha convert is just to divide the image by the alpha and you can see you get the exact same result, okay? And therefore you can also use that on the alpha channel itself like this and then you can see you get an unpremultiplied alpha channel. And yeah, if you want to know more about this technique, just watch the other tutorial in the side dish category. Um, you can see it's something called but alpha over nodes or something. You'll see. And yeah, that's basically it for this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you have any kind of questions or comments or whatever, post it in the comment section below the videos. Uh, yeah. I'm always glad to get some feedback or something. Uh, yeah, thank you and goodbye.